Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back Show, where intimacy is real. On this show, we believe that intimately connecting with yourself, your significant other, children, family, friends, business networks, community, and your higher power can elevate your life to work towards a positive future. Thus, we explore intimate topics, inspiring life stories, spiritually and insightful tips on strengthening relationships. This show is hosted by Dr. April, a Florida licensed mental health counselor, relationship and intimacy therapist, board certified telemental health counselor, national certified counselor, and a certified sex therapist. She is the owner of Vacation Counseling and Cape Coral Therapists and the creator of the Intimate Connections newsletter. For more information about Dr. April's services and the Bringing Intimacy Back show, please visit bringingintimacyback.com. Check out past shows on Apple iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Now, let's get this episode of the Bringing Intimacy Back show started because we share with you the secret power to intimacy to create a life you love or love the life you create. Now, here's your host, Dr. April. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show where intimacy is real. Well, I know many of you are just tired of hearing about the elections and different kind of stuff like that. So guess what? In this show, that's not what we're going to discuss at all. So put that aside. But in this show today and, and in further shows, I'm really trying to improve the show. So if you have any questions or you have any comments, please let me know because I'm really trying to work on improving the show. Um, a few years ago, I was um, also trying to work on improving relationships, uh, my own relationships. And so I was thinking, because we're all dating and all that kind of stuff. And a few years back ago, I was, I was out there in the dating world, but I was doing my dating kind of just haphazardly. Okay. And so when I decided, you know what, just like many of you guys, I'm busy doing this and that, but I really needed to take my relationship seriously. And guess what I did? I got a matchmaker. Yes. Dr. April actually got a matchmaker. Yes. And you may be like, wow, why did you do that? Because I was so busy and I needed to find um, someone that I could, you know, talk with and meet with that understood my needs. Because what I was doing was not working. I was getting people who were wanting to be my, I was going to be their sugar mamas. And as you know, that just, that wasn't going to work. So what I did is I got a matchmaker. Yes. Yeah. And that was fabulous. And so what today's topic is. It's because um, I want to bring that service so you guys know, feel comfortable with it. If it's something that is something you would want to do, well, I found someone who's an expert in it. What I mean by an expert in it, this girl actually grew up in it, okay? And her name is Tammy Pickle. Hi, Tammy. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Hi. Pickle. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah. So today we're going to be talking about I'm looking for love. And Tammy Pickle is... Um, She's a vice president and partner of Elite Connections International. It's a family owned matchmaking agency that has been in the business for 26 years. They have 25 offices all over nationally and internationally. And Tammy has been in the matchmaking business, um, probably because well, she grew up, but her mom was in it. So she grew up in it, for, but professionally for the last 20 years. And she has been featured all over magazine, TVs. And so she's really an expert matchmaker and relationship expert. And I really um, am thanking you so much for being on the show and providing all the information for our guests today, or our listeners out there today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here talking with you. Yes, yes. So I guess the first thing I want to ask as you're growing up and, you know, um, there's a family business, when did you realize what your family was into and how did that even evolve? Yeah, so my mom started this company 26 years ago. So let's do the math. I'm 39. So I was about, you know, 13, 14. I'm not so good at math. So <laughs> she actually joined the matchmaker. She brought home some videotapes and I sat down with her and I picked out my, my stepdad. So I just thought they would be so great together. I felt like they had a lot in common. So she went out with him and she has been with him ever since. So that was my first match. And then she just thought, what a great way of meeting people. She was in real estate at the time. 
So that's when she decided to start her own company. She started her own matchmaking agency and I was young and I would kind of help her with flyers and mailers and things like that um, throughout the years. Uh, but I really started, you know, matching people around, you know, 18, 19, 20, really full time uh, matchmaker. And, and that's when I fell in love with what I do. It was not, nothing that I was ever going to do. I wanted to get into counseling. I wanted to do other things. But I really fell in love with helping people when I could sit down with them and get to know them and then make them appropriate matches. And they give me a call, Tammy, you help me find the one. That's when I really fell in love with what I do. And I decided I want to do this forever. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I love to help people. It's what it's in my blood. I, I have always wanted to help people in a certain way. I wasn't sure which way. Um, I wanted to get into counseling when I was younger. I got my degree in psychology and this just kind of fell in my lap. It was something that my mom has created a wonderful company and I have helped her in the last 20 years um, build it into what it is today. We're a good team and I'm grateful to her, uh, you know, to be able to be able to work with her and help people every single day and just love what I do. And she and I work closely together and we have a really large team that work with us and we kind of feel like we're family and I feel like I'm friends with my clients and, and, you know, being able to match them and something so intimate, um, which is sometimes bad, but most of the time good uh, because, you know, people expect a lot. They want to find their love right off the bat. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Um, but really, you know, all of our clients meet someone that they like, that they hit it off with. And that's just music to my ears. It's what I, why I do what I do and love it every single day. Yes. And, like you said, it's a very intimate type of experience in the sense of even um, meeting with a matchmaker, right. telling them all that information. Yes, and then taking it and um, utilizing it, you know, to help make, make a person, match a person. So even as a teenager, were you always like matching up your friends and that kind of stuff? Because since you did it at such a young age. You know, I, I, I've always been a people person and okay. I've all. I've always been um, wanting to set up my friends and, and help people find, you know, the right person. So, yeah, I kind of feel like I was born to do this. And um, if my mom didn't start it, I would have done it in some way. So it just all worked out the way it was supposed to. <laughs> oh, good, good. And I'm assuming with matchmaking, just like with counseling, there's a skill to it because you cannot just, you know, um, put two people together. There is a skill to it. Yeah. Right. Really just like knowing people and personalities and who you feel would be a good fit because we are kind of hand selecting members that we think would be appropriate and of course running them by both parties. But right. it's, it's a feeling I have and then I, I send appropriate matches to my clients and then they say yes or no, of course, we want it to be mutual. Um, but that's what's different about a matchmaker versus online. You know, uh, online, you're kind of sifting through hundreds of profiles. As right. a matchmaker, I'm sifting through hundreds of profiles and then sending, you know, matches that I, I think are going to be great matches for each person. And, right, and right. based on lots of things, you know, uh, personality, how someone was raised, what they're looking for, what's important to them, and then knowing both people and who's a good fit together on many different levels. Right, but I know people are maybe listening and thinking that well, I can do that myself. But even from my own experience, when I was doing that myself, I got kind of crazy stuff. And the yeah. person that they matched me with, um, it's just one person, and I'm with that person, my husband now, but it oh. wouldn't have been someone that I would have, um, if I saw them on the street, I may not have matched with them, you know what I'm saying, or approached them and that kind of stuff. And the same thing, even in the, um, the click through of profiles. Right. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of my clients, they, they may have tried online and, and they're like, oh, it's just so much work. It's so time consuming. People aren't being um, honest about who they are or what they're all about or what they're looking for. So I'm kind of doing that research on anyone, making sure um, I'm doing background. I'm, I'm making sure they are who they say they are. They are divorced. They don't have criminal history, all those types of things that you may worry about meeting somebody online. I'm doing that work for them so they don't have to waste their time with, you know, inauthentic uh, photos or profiles or those types of things. So I'm kind of doing all that work that you maybe don't want to do online. Right, right. So when you um, get a matchmaker, and then we probably should even just define 
what exactly is a matchmaker? Since I've been using this word. Yeah, so um, I mean, we meet everyone personally. We get to know our clients well, talk to them in detail about themselves and where they came from and what they're looking for and really go into detail about the person they're wanting to meet and who I feel might be a good fit for them. But really getting to know um, each person individually pretty well um, and then making those appropriate matches based on preferences, what someone's looking for. Um, we do work for you know professionals, people that are looking to find the right person. They're serious about settling down. Um, you know, majority of our clients are contacting us directly because maybe they are not wanting to use online or they want that route and they just want a different way of meeting other quality professionals that we have pre-screened. Our clients appreciate that we are meeting, checking IDs, background searching, verifying everyone is who they say they are, what they do for a living. Um, we're you know making sure we're using recent photos, all those types of things. So really we have a very large database of clients um, that we search through and then we make appropriate matches send profiles um, and then both parties agree to meet each other and then we set it up for them. Okay, wonderful. How has matchmaking been a little different in 2020? Or have there been any changes because of all what's going on? Yeah, quarantine's a little tricky. I mean, things are starting to open up now and, and get more normal than they were. But um, for, you know, four or five months uh, around March, there, there was a hold on it. Uh, people were talking or they were virtually chatting, but a lot of people didn't want to meet in person. They were a little bit scared about doing that. So then things started to open up and people were open minded to maybe meeting for a picnic or a walk or, you know, it, when the restaurants open for, you know, an outdoor dinner date and things like that. But I felt like um, when people were chatting and they were getting to know each other over the phone, they, they were able to connect a little bit more than maybe um, going on a first date and then and then writing them off. Oh, I didn't feel a connection. Well, it was a it was a one hour date. So really, you know, maybe um, you want to go on a second date or a third date to get to know them better. So I feel like people gave, um, you know, these matches a little bit more time uh, to get to know each other and evolve into relationships. So I did have a lot of clients that met and grew into, you know, a foundation, a friendship, and then ended up meeting and falling for each other even more. So I felt like there was some positives and negatives in the whole thing, but things are opening up. And I mean, phones are ringing off the hook. That, I was about to say that. Yeah. I'm assuming that people, many from what I do as, as a therapist, there are a lot of people who are very lonely now. Right. You know what I'm saying? They've been trapped in their home and that kind of stuff. And before they may thought, I don't need a partner. I don't need this. I don't need that. But now with this quarantine and everything, like maybe I do need someone. Maybe I would like to, you know, have someone. And so I'm assuming now your business would be booming a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Business has been busy. I think people are like, I'm sick of being alone. They've been alone. They haven't been evil uh, around friends or family very much. So people are lonely and, and they're not wanting to do this again alone. So like, Okay, I, before, if there's another quarantine or if there's not, I, I want to find the right person and help me find that right person. So yeah, we've been very busy with people that, okay, I'm going to make a change. I want, I want somebody in my life. I want somebody to be with and spend time with and, uh, and you know, help me find that person. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to take a short break. But when we come back, we're going to go into the nates and bolts of if you're dating and you're serious about it, you know, what are the next steps in this whole matchmaking process? Are you wanting to feel empowered, loved, secured, respected, and inspired in these uncertain times? If so, Dr. April, a licensed mental health counselor and relationship and sex therapist who specializes in intimacy, can help you. Whether you are in need of insight and skills to work through a struggling relationship through couples counseling, or to understand your anxiety or depression in individual counseling, or to figure out your life goals in coaching, Dr. April's compassion and expertise can assist you in these areas. Also, she provides services for emotional support, animal documentation, supervision, and workshops. In addition, Dr. April has a group practice called Cape Coral Therapist. Cape Coral Therapist has an awesome team of male and female mental health therapists, all specialized in various areas including mental health, Christian counseling, trauma, addiction, immigration, and sports counseling, and are ready to serve you. The Cape Coral Therapist Team, which is rated five-star on Google Reviews, is known as the Dream Team. 
because of their energy and passion for therapy and determination to provide you with effective and solution-focused counseling for you and your family in a safe and confidential environment. For more information on how you can schedule an appointment in person or virtually with Dr. April or any of the therapists at Cape Coral Therapists, please call 239-565-6921. And you are welcome to visit Dr. April's website, www.draprilbrown.com and www.capecoraltherapist.com. You can follow Dr. April on LinkedIn at Dr. April Brown. You can follow Cape Coral Therapist on Facebook at Cape Coral Therapy. Just remember, Dr. April and her team of therapists and resources can help you strengthen your intimate connections with yourself, your loved ones, your community, and your higher power. Okay, welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Show, where intimacy is real. And today, what we're talking about, if you're out there and you're, and because of this quarantine and all the other stuff, and you're lonely and you're thinking, you know, I really want to do, I really want to meet someone. I've been there. And so what we're talking about is taking it to the next level to get serious about looking for love. And in getting serious about looking for love, sometimes it's good to have an expert. And so today what we have is Tammy Pickle on our show. Um, and she's an expert matchmaker. So Tammy, um, one of the things that I'm just, you know, thinking about even how the process went for me was that I had to really get, um, in all honesty, serious about dating. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? I think, yeah. And do you see that in the sense of when you start to think about how having a matchmakers or even in the sense of the clients you've had, those who have been really serious about it and that kind of stuff, do you agree with that subject? Yes, 100%. I feel like if they are looking into a matchmaker, they're pretty serious. They are just not coming across the right types of people on their own, whether online or out and about. And then they, you know, are, are wanting us to, to match them. And so once they come to us, yeah, they're pretty serious about finding the right person, which is why we have a good success rate. I mean, majority of our clients are like, I want to find someone, I want to settle down. I'm serious about, you know, the right person. It's not about you know, dating a bunch of people at once. It's really about finding quality and finding the right person and then eventually, you know, being with that person. Right. And I noticed that you guys have offices um, nationally and internationally. So in this sense, um, luckily I was blessed with a matchmaker who actually matched me with someone. Um, he's, he's here, but he's actually from Belgium, the European, okay. but it worked out. Okay. But one of the things that was one of my main concern was um, diversity, having people, you know, yes. yes. How does that work with you guys? Yeah, we work with um, all ethnicities, all um, locations. We really can help anyone anywhere. And we have a very large database. I mean, 26 years in business. We have a database nationwide and internationally. We really can help anyone anywhere. I mean, majority of our offices are Northern, Northern and Southern California, um, Florida, Arizona, Vegas, um, Texas, and then a, a lot of European clients as well. So that, those are some of our main locations. Oh, New York as well uh, okay. is another big location that we have. Yes, yes. So um, when you go to a matchmaker, should you be very picky? very open. How does that? that I mean, out? definitely being open-minded is just going to open up the possibilities of options for you. But we also want to know what's your type? Who do you typically uh, enjoy being with? Um, if religion is important, if, if uh, you know, somebody wanting to have children, um, you know, we need to know some of the very important kind of deal breakers. Um, you know, we don't want somebody to be like, yeah, I'm open. And then they, and then they come to us and they're like, no, 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 I would never date somebody with children. I mean, we need to know what's very important to, to people. And some things are very important and deal breakers. And some things are, I'm open with age or, or height or what somebody looks like. I mean, those types of things, I feel like you should be open-minded 
um, because you know you're single for a reason and if you're not open-minded um, then you may miss the opportunity of meeting somebody that is your perfect fit I don't know how many times I've heard you know not my type and I'm like but he's awesome he's wonderful I really think you guys are going to hit it off and they meet and then they end up together and yeah. if she wouldn't have given him the chance or vice yeah. versa yeah, it would have exactly. never happened Yes, definitely. So when they hire a matchmaker, do they have to go through a process of the questionnaire interviews? How does that work? Yes. You know, so uh, we can get that parameter. Yeah. First, uh, we kind of get some detail on the person. So we have them fill out a questionnaire on our website. And then uh, we have a phone interview, um, either virtual or in person. Um, typically, of course, we like to meet in person, but we have done a lot of virtual meetings lately just because it's easier for everyone. So then we talk in detail about, you know, born and raised and starting from the beginning and then going through life and just really trying to get to know this person, um, past relationships, why they failed, what they what happened with them. And then, um, you know, about what they do for work and, and travel wise and what they do for hobbies and interests and activities and things they enjoy doing. And then really in detail about the person they're wanting to meet. I want them to be as detailed as, as possible. I really want somebody that likes to do all the things I do, ski and tennis and golf and or open minded to it. You know, if, if those things are important and they want somebody to be able to do all those activities with, then they would kind of relay that to me. Um, so I really get to know people well, um, you know, a couple hour interview at least. And then as I work with them, I get to know them even better. But that's kind of how the process would start. Okay. So it's definitely not a five minute kind of thing. It's no, you guys go, no. go deep, which is really, deep. Yeah. really good. Yeah, good. Yeah, we good, really good. try to get to know our clients well. And that's why I, I feel like I'm friends with my clients. You know, I really get to know them and what makes them tick and, and what they're looking for. I really need to know that. So I really feel like uh, we have good communication. Uh, we don't take on everyone as a client. If I didn't feel like it helped them or make them nice matches, then I wouldn't take them on as a client. It's all about, you know, reputation. And if I can't okay. match someone, then, then it looks poorly on, on my company and myself. And um, so I right, really do right. get to what know my the, clients. Yeah. What is the reasons why um, you wouldn't take on a client or person isn't ready or whatever the case may be. Yeah. If somebody is looking for something that I don't feel that I could deliver, uh, maybe they're very specific in what they're looking for. Um, they, uh, have, it's a very small pool to choose from. And I don't think that I could deliver nice matches for them. Um, just, I would probably just say somebody has um, very specific preferences, criteria. They're looking for a two age, uh, two year age window, and it has to be a doctor and it has to be right. in um, a, a, a small area of, of where they live, um, height preference, you know, just it, okay. the more specific somebody is, the harder it is to be able to match them. So, um, you know, if I can't make them nice matches and I have people that I think would be appropriate, then, you know, I of course wouldn't take them on as a client. That's why I get to know all my clients well, even before working with them. Okay. And do you guys take clients, um, I know when I was looking, I met a, a certain age and <laughs> yes, and it's so it's like a second relationship or second uh, marriage, whatever. Um, but there are people who may think about doing a matchmaking for the first time. Right. Yeah, we really do have all ages from mid, early to mid 20s all the way to 80 um, and everywhere in between. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of clients that are like, um, you know, I'm working hard, I'm busy, I'm just not able to find the right person for the first time around. And then maybe I'm divorced and I have children and, I, and I'm also busy working hard yeah. and I want to find somebody for the second time around or maybe the third time around. <laughs> yeah. So yes, we work for all ages, um, men, women, uh, across the board. Okay. Is there a difference when a man comes for matchmaking versus a woman? Is, is there any kind of difference? in that aspect or is it? I mean, really, um, no, I, I just, uh, we work for men and women that come to us and want us to work for them full time. Um, so, you know, everybody needs needs help and needs people to find love. And uh, there are companies out there that only work for one or the other. And we really do work for everyone, um, men and women and all ages and um, all different types of people. Um, okay. that are, you work with all types of relationships, you know, there's, um, yeah. Um, in the sense of, um, 
uh, relationships of alternative lifestyles or poly relationships or any of that kind of stuff? I mean, typically just, you know, monogamous, yeah. um, heterosexual, heterosexual is really uh, kind of yeah. what we have been involved in. We have had a lot of people, um, you know, reach out that are, you know, in the gay community and, and maybe we'll get that, you know, get there. We just don't have the, a large enough database to be able to, you know, help outside of, um, you know, heterosexual right now. Okay. Okay. So on the, um, I'm assuming you guys keep some kind of statistics or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, so my mom has come up with an 86% success rate that will introduce you to somebody you date for six months or longer. Wow. So yeah, uh, most people are pretty serious and they're able to find someone um, if we work with them, you know, eight out of 10 or so are going to meet someone that, they're, that they end up with. Wow, that is a very good, yes, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How many matchmakers do you guys have in your in elite connections? We have about 30 matchmakers, uh, full-time and recruiters that work with us. Fabulous. Good. Yes. Good. And so you guys meet with... Team. Huh? Yeah, we, do, we have a great big team uh, kind of all over, but we work closely together. So I can help match people in Miami with my other matchmakers that work there. So we're a big team and we all work together. Okay. Okay. So sometimes it's a discussion with more than one matchmaker on if this individual works well and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. And we have recruiters in all areas too. So um, you might, you know, meet a, a matchmaker that you'd be working with and then we have recruiters in the area and they would be going out. They would be getting referrals from friends or out and about in the community and they would bring people in just to meet with our clients. So we have recruiters kind of all over the board too. Okay. Well, take us back around the back scene of the um, process. How does that really work? You come in, you fill in all your stuff, you talk with a matchmaker, um, and she or he gets all your information. Then you sit and wait. And what happens? What happens after that? So then um, I typically show a few ideas of clients that I think would be a good fit, um, see where they're at, see if they might be interested in some of those members. That's kind of gives me an idea of a starting point to be able to match that person. And then they end up, you know, joining with us. We send contracts, they sign, they, you know, send a payment of some kind. Then we get them started. We put together all their information, uh, pictures, profiles. We send over their profile so they can make any changes that they want to. That's the way that, you know, we would be sending out their profile to others. Um, and then once we get any kind of changes, then we send their information out to the other member. Once we get approval, then we come back to that person and let them know um, this person is interested. Are you also interested? Then once they both say yes, um, then we set up the match. And um, typically they want to talk and set up the match um, or we can, you know, coordinate the date between the two of them for the first date as well. Um, then once they meet, uh, we typically, you know, uh, suggest a dinner date for the first date. Um, and then we can explain. Why do you guys suggest a dinner date for the first date? Um, just because a uh, dinner date, you have a bit of time to get to know each other over a coffee or a cocktail date. Um, so we just think, you know, an hour or so at dinner, you can get to know each other better over a 20 minute coffee date, you know, something like that. Um, but we have had people do different kinds of date, of course, of and picnics and, and, you know, um, museums and, and all different types of things. But typically a first date is, is a dinner date. Um, and then once the two meet, then they come back to me and give me feedback on what they thought about each other, if they liked each other, and, and we relay feedback as well. So I kind of play middleman, let both of the other people know um, if something may have happened, if the other person was interested or not interested. So I can kind of be that fly on the wall and, and let my client know, yeah, she'd love to see you again. Um, or, you know, he would love to see you again and kind of coordinate and let that person know, you know, sometimes a first date, you don't know how the other person was feeling, you don't know if they were interested or being polite. Um, so I can kind of relay those helpful tips too, which is nice. Um, yeah, you should call her again. You should ask her out again. Um, or, you know, maybe she wasn't, you know, that, uh, interested and let's work on something else for you. Um, and so, then so, just, yeah. So after that first date. Um, and you're like, oh my gosh, this 
you know, is he going to call me or they're like, right. if they get a chance to talk with you, process, you know, how did that date feel and stuff. Right. And then you can actually relay or help the in-between. Is that what right. you're saying? Right, exactly. So, awesome. um, so yeah, they both let me know how it went. And, and there has been times where she's like, well, he was nice. I don't know. And I was like, well, he would love to take you out again. If you're interested, it was just a first date. And sometimes first dates are a little awkward. Somebody's not on their very best behavior. They, they might've, you know, um, not been themselves completely. So maybe give it a second chance. I, you don't know how many times I've pushed somebody into a second date and they ended up with that person because, you know, first dates, it's like an interview. You're nervous. You're yes. you know, not quite yourself. So um, and, and yeah, so it's nice to be able to relay that feedback, help them out or yeah. let them know, yeah, you know, they weren't really feeling it. Let's move on to something else. And then you don't have to waste your time, you know, messaging and not hearing back and wondering and those types of things. Yes. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. And our first date, he barely said anything. And so, yes. Yeah. Because so yeah, people get nervous. Right. So, yeah. and, and so many times they're like, well, he didn't ask me anything about myself. I thought that was a little rude. And, and so yeah. then I'll go back to him and let him know. And, and then that can be helpful for him in his dating future. Like right. make sure I ask more about you instead of right. um, just letting you ask me a bunch of questions. And sometimes you don't realize you're doing it. You right. know, they're, they're the talkative ones. You're a little bit shyer, but then you got to step up your game and you got to, you got, you know, got to come off a little bit more interested maybe and those types of things. Sometimes <laughs> you don't even know you're doing it. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. So that's really great that, that you provide that insight that you don't get from um, if you were just regularly, you know, out there dating. And right. If you were online dating or whatever, then you may not ever get feedback. And, and if you didn't hear from the person, you're like, I wonder why. I wonder if something happened. So it's kind of nice to get that feedback. We almost feel like we're friends introducing our friends together. But I'm not going to be mad if you don't like my friend. We'll just move on from here. Uh, but it, it's nice. I mean, if I were dating, I would appreciate, you know, the feedback and what somebody thought and, and you know, helping me out if, if maybe I wasn't interested or I was interested. Uh, so right, definitely. That's nice. Yeah. And the other aspect, because um, I know someone just asked us, if you're hiring a um, matchmaker, can you date outside of that also? That was a question from one of our viewers. Yes. Some of our clients date um, out, outside of, of who we are matching them to. They come across somebody and they want to take them out. Typically, we just do kind of one match at a time. We okay. want you to invest your time in that person, see how it goes. I mean, you know, if you're coming to us, we think it's because you really want to find the right person and settle down. So we don't make multiple matches at one time. We really want you to go out with someone. We have hold time for that reason um, that if you like someone, you can place your membership on hold. You can see how it goes with that person. Um, really, can you invest a lot of your energy or time into multiple people at once? Not so much. So we right. really feel like meet someone, see how it goes. If you want to see, you know, date a, a few times and see how it goes with that person. If it goes somewhere, wonderful. You can freeze your membership. Um, and if it doesn't, then we'll work on something new for you. So really, we just... Um, make one match. It's really quality over quantity, you know, with, okay. with, with our matches as well. Okay. And we have another question. Um, they're wondering if they live in a small area and there's not that much selection. Are people um, in the matchmaking that, you know, use a matchmaker, are they sometimes willing to travel to meet someone? Uh, typically, we um, suggest, you know, the person that we're matching go to meet um, in a specific area. So let's just say, yeah, he, I, I have somebody in a smaller area and, and they want to travel to one, a larger um, populated area to meet people. Um, we wouldn't fly out uh, that match to meet that person, but we would suggest that they were already traveling to a specific area, let's say LA or Miami or New York or something, right. and they were already going to be there. And then we could match them why they were in that area. But we would all also let that person know, okay, this is where they live. They come out, you know, maybe on a regular basis. I would get all that detail for them, but um, I would be upfront and honest that they don't live local and they'd be coming out on a regular basis and that type of thing. But yeah, we do have clients that travel to meet people. 
Okay, good, good. Can you tell us uh, one of your successful stories of um, an example of, of, of clients that have um, met through matchmaking? Yeah, I, uh, lots, lots of successful stories. I've been to, you know, um, a, a lot of weddings and I've had a, a lot of engagements and, and special people meet um, through my help. But one, one match, um, they were in two different states and I kind of had to push her to meet him because I'm like, um, you know, he could live anywhere and he would live anywhere. And I just, I had a feeling, a gut feeling that they would be a good fit. And I had to push her into meeting him. And I said, you know, she's going to, he's going to be in LA this weekend. I would just love you to meet him in person and see. And she's like, Tammy, okay, I trust you. Let's do this. So they met and they both called me the next day. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. And I'm like, I told you, I told you. And so they've been together ever since they're planning on getting married and um, having a family and, and all of it. So I was like, you know, I still, I still tell her if it wasn't, for me pushing you, you would have never met him. So, you know, I, I love that you have just a, an idea that something will work, you have a gut feeling and and then it, it, it works out. But I really had to push it and I'm glad I did. And I'm glad she said yes. And, uh, you know, they're, they've been happy together for the last two years. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're got, um, because you're an expert in this field. Yeah, and you've developed it for so, so many years. Um, how do you start matching people? What's what's the first thing that comes up with you in this? Um, yeah, I just I, I sometimes have a feeling just when somebody goes into detail about themselves and really in detail about the person they're wanting to meet um, and what's important to them and you know what they like and what their hobbies are and what they're into and and then I get a good feeling of knowing everyone personally who I feel would be a good fit for that person because um, I know the women personally and the men personally and then I really have a feeling of of two people that might be a good fit because I know what they're looking for too. So I, it's just, it's a feeling. Um, uh, okay. and, and then also I want both people to be excited too and attracted right. and all those types of things. So I always run profiles and photos by all my clients. Um, but most of the time I'm, I'm pretty right on. I mean, if I send over a few profiles, um, they're typically like, yeah, those all look wonderful to me. And then, you know, sometimes it takes some time to meet the right. one chemistry wise and all of that. Um, but usually I have a pretty good feeling and I'm pretty right on about, you know, attraction wise and, 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 and things in common and those types of things. And then really meeting in person and chemistry, you don't, you can't, I can't do that for my clients. Right, right. Um, but, uh, but, you know, most of the time they're like, yeah, she was, she was great. I was attracted and I went on a second date and then maybe, you know, it fizzles out and then we work on something new and sometimes it takes a bit of time. Sometimes it doesn't happen, you know, right off the bat for right, a second right. or a date. Sometimes it takes, you know, six dates, seven, 10, even <laughs> uh, to find the one. And right. really it's just meeting people that you feel are appropriate and then, you know, uh, hopefully eventually finding the one that, you know, there's connection and chemistry and all those types of things. Right. I would have never thought, um, my husband's a business owner and I'm a business owner. And I didn't really realize how important that connection is sure. and how understanding that when you have your own business, it's a variety of stuff that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I would have never thought about how that is a strong connection when I was doing all this online dating. You yeah. you understand what I'm saying? That that yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's many other things. But yeah, I think definitely the matchmaker helped in, in that aspect of helping me realize what are some things that I really, truly value. Because sometimes right. people don't know, you know, what they're, what's truly important to them and what their values are. Right, and things and change. change. That? Yeah, you things know, change, things too. Things yeah. change from, you know, 10 years ago to your dating now. And you might be yeah. looking for different things you don't even know you you need to be looking for. <laughs> yes, definitely, yes. Well, we're going to take our second break. And our second break, Tammy, I would love for you to tell the, our audience about Elite Connections and how they can um, sign up and get involved. Okay, great, thanks. So I'm Tammy Pickle. I am VP and partner of Elite Connections, and we're a high-end matchmaking agency. 
Uh, we have thousands of clients and we can help anyone anywhere. And if you're single and interested and you know really want to meet quality professionals that are looking to meet the right person, contact us. We have a very large team of matchmakers that would love to help you and talk with you and interview you and really get to know you better. And our website is EliteConnections.com and you can contact us at 800-923-4200. And my email is Tammy, T-A-M-M-I at EliteConnections.com. Uh, we'd love to talk to you more and talk to you about making you some nice matches. All right. Thank you for definitely sharing that information with us. Well, now in our last segment, our toolbox where we give some tips out. And so since you're an expert matchmaker, I would like for you to give some dating tips out for our listeners who are out there listening. Like, I'm not sure how to do any of this. Yeah. So I would just suggest be open-minded, um, being open-minded about who you're looking for and the possibilities of searching for someone, you know, just be open-minded. Somebody asks you to do something, say yes. Somebody asks you to go out, say yes. Um, you know, just uh, look different avenues of meeting someone, you know, nothing will change if you don't make a change. Yeah. Uh, if you are wanting to meet someone, but you don't ever make an effort uh, or, or try something different or try something new, then nothing will change, you know? If right, right, right. And working, that's just yeah, that's very important there. The use of to make a change because I know people are out there trying to, to date, but they're not, um, they work all the time and they're right. not doing anything different. Right. You work, you're in your routine, you go to the gym, you go to the same coffee shop, you know, do something different. Say yes to a charity event with, you know, friends. Um, look into things in your community. Just get out there and, and try to enjoy life and have fun on your, your time off and the weekends you know, take up a new hobby. If you've been wanting to learn something or golf or tennis, or, you know, you can meet people in your community doing different things that kind of outside of your comfort zone. Um, you know, just, just be open-minded. If somebody asks you out and you're like, well, I don't know, I don't know. Just meet them, make a friend, you know, um, make a, form a new connection. You never know who you could meet through that person even. Um, making friendships with people or, um, you know, uh, being positive and really, uh, internally happy. I, I, I have a lot of clients that kind of um, seem almost a little bit desperate to find someone, you know, really just being internally happy with your life and your career and the way you look and the way you feel, um, you know, uh, uh, I want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, just do it. Let's, let's make a change. Let's do it. Let's be internally happy. And then then we will find someone, you know, not needing somebody to fulfill you or make you happy, um, really just being internally happy and with your life and where you are in life. And then, you know, someone would just be icing on the cake, you know, not needing someone to fulfill you or to be whole, um, you know, yeah, getting, getting to know um, people, uh, giving them a chance. You know, I, I don't know how many times I, I hear, oh, it wasn't really my type on a first date. You know, people grow on you. You know, yeah. people um, become, you, you, you connect with people and you, you find things in common after uh, more than an hour date. You know, if somebody's really trying with you and maybe give them a second chance, maybe go out again, you know, uh, uh, really just give that uh, some energy and see what could happen because I hear it all the time. Just... Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I wasn't really feeling it. Well, maybe if they're focused on you and they're really giving you a lot of your, your time and energy, uh, then keep trying, you know, and, and if you like someone, show them you like them, you know, don't play the games and all that. Like just make time for people. I, I, I hear so many times I'm, I'm so busy. I, you know, I can't make the time. Well then then you're not going to find someone. So really focus and give them your energy and give them your time and make some phone calls and send some texts and let people know you, you know, you're thinking of them and you want to see them weekly or you know every other week or whatever. Um, just really give something your all and show them that you you're you want to progress in this. Right, and one of the things someone's mentioned before to me. Um, and which I started doing when I was back then dating is you should start to live your life as if you had someone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I really 
like someone to go to the park with or to the beach, but you just sit at home and you never go. Right. I wait. Take your butt, go do it, and you never know. Yes. Yeah, because you want to be um, in movement when that person comes so they can move with you, not for that person to pull you off the couch. Right, exactly. And, you know, always go out looking and feeling your very best because you never know, you know, when you're going to run into somebody. I, I I know a lot of single people and they're, they're going out in their yoga clothes and their hair all crazy. Like, you know, if you want to meet someone, you never know. It could be dropping off your kids. It could be going to the grocery store. You just never know. And if you feel like a million bucks, then you're going to attract people that way. Um, so that's, you know, uh, more advice, but like, you know, communication, you want right. something from someone, you want to hear from somebody more, you like somebody, you want to go out with somebody on the weekend, let them know. I'd love to see you this weekend. Are you around? Don't always wait for them or assume right, exactly. that they should be texting you multiple times a day. You have to let somebody know. Nobody can read your mind. Just like in, in friendships or or family member relationships. You need to let somebody know how you're feeling and what you need from them and what you want from them. Um, because so many times relationships can be sabotaged because I'm, I'm thinking one thing and he's not, you know, understanding what I need and I'm not letting him know. Um, so then I write him off and, and, you know, I could have salvaged that if, if I let him know and, and he could step up to the plate and, and possibly give me what I needed. Right, right. I definitely agree with that, that you've got to be able to vocalize. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. In, in, in all aspects of your relationship, from in the beginning, middle to the end, communication yeah. is huge. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. So communication, um, and we talked about earlier about self-awareness, as I think is really important. Yes. And like you said, get out there and try something. In, and um, when I looked and thought about the whole match, I said, I'm going to try it if I don't like it. I won't do it again. Yeah. Right. And so, but yeah, but you get out and you try and, and right. it's, yeah, great. So I'm glad that you mentioned about the things of getting people a chance and going out there and doing something and trying. That's really definitely um, important and being open. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes just getting out there gives you more confidence. Um, it, get, it gives you a little bit of practice, you know, if right. you've been out of the dating game and you're nervous about it, sometimes it is just getting out there and going on some dates and talking with some people and you get more confidence and you build and then you're able to, you know, meet more people or, or you, you're just, you know, you kind of get better at it. It's just, you know, it, it's the confidence of, of, of talking with, you know, the opposite sex and, and just getting out there and feeling you know, just better about who you are and dating and meeting people and, you know, because you find that some people get stuck in, in the looks, Do you find that people get stuck in just. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Be you know, that changes over time. <laughs> yeah, right. We, we're not all going to look the same. And yeah, it's, it's about a connection internally. You have things in common. You have things that are important to right. both of you. There's um, you know, common interests and hobbies. And yeah, don't just think about the A, like, oh, I'm only dating two years older than me or someone that's oh, six yeah. foot or he's yeah. got to look a certain way, you know, be open-minded because, you know, that person you're looking for might not be all those things on your checklist. So just, you know, be open to someone outside of your checklist because you never know. And, and, you know, you want to grow old with somebody, you want to have a connection, you want to have a foundation, a friendship, that, that those things I think are more important than, you know, uh, what he looks like or what she looks like and, and just being more open uh, to, to all different types. Right, definitely. Yes. Yeah. And like you're saying, is talking about looking at people inside and their values. Right. And that is really important in, in that aspect. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would love to thank you so much for being on the show. Yes. If anyone's interested in finding more information about Tammy Pickle, definitely check her and her company out at EliteConnections.com. Um, her email is Tammy at EliteConnections.com. They have an 800 number. Like you, like you said, they have offices right in New York, um, California, Florida, right. international, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Did I miss any of the other big cities? Um, Texas, Arizona, Texas. Vegas, um, Colorado. We're we're 
you know, anywhere you can think of, we can help you. <laughs> um, they have lots of people in their database and their 800 number is 800-923-4200. Um, you can check them out on Facebook. They also have a Facebook and it's Elite Connections Matchmakers. And of course she has her own Facebook at Tammy Pickle Elite Connections. Thank you so much, Tammy, for being on the show. Um, you're welcome back at any time and I really do appreciate it. And for all our listeners, um, thank you guys for listening. And if you're thinking to get in about dating, definitely check her out. Um, you can check out um, my counseling services if you're interested at www.draprilbrown.com. And if you're interested about the podcast, please follow us, check us out, give us your feedback with the Bringing Intimacy Back. And you can find us on any of the podcast things that you like. Thank you.